we love Egypt, we love the Egyptians, and I'm so optimistic. Okay, yeah, I'm optimistic. <laughs> here, is, here is a start. <laughs> I don't know. Optimistic. And I would like to say hello okay. also to everybody in the studio, especially Ra-ba-ib. That's her new name in hieroglyphs. Who? Uh, Samar? Her name is Ra. No, and Samar is Sam. Yes. All right? Okay. The other one, the right other beside one, her. Our producer, yes. yes. Her name is? Rabab. Rabab. Huh? Her new name in hieroglyphs ah, is Ra. Then it's a new name. Ba that is Ib. Okay, then it's a new name. Ra is Ra. Ra. The sun. Ba is the double, the, the energy uh -huh. in ancient Egypt. Uh -huh. All right? And Ib means the heart. So she's the energetic heart of the sun. The energetic And that's heart only my new interpretation, which I just sun. did right now. It's got no history whatsoever. Touch wood, touch wood, you are very energetic. Touch wood. Okay, we finished, I think, the last stop or station was Benny Sweet. And it's time to start our cruise from Luxor. Today we'll be talking about our historical monuments, our beautiful monuments in Luxor. I'm very happy that we are uh, today actually sealing, if you like, mm -hmm. that beautiful tour, the 10-day mm -hmm. cruise between Cairo and Aswan, or between Aswan and Cairo. Uh, we started from mm -hmm. Cairo, uh -huh. Aswan, and then we stopped by uh, Elmenia, the beautiful Elmenia, and then Asyut, and then Suhaj, and then we arrived to Luxor. And we passed by Bani Swift, of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. And we stopped today by Luxor, mm -hmm. and from Luxor, what I prefer to call it Luxor, mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, everything starts coming back to the tourist visitor. When, Luxor when because it's the plural uh, of uh, Qasr. Qasr, that's right. It's an Arabic word means Al Qasr. Al -Qasr. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, palaces, as you said. And that's when people start to recollect mm -hmm. that total recall, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, naming the, the movie, total recall of what they read or what they've seen mm -hmm. in some of the documentaries. Because most of those places ring the bell. To, to the tourist, to the person, to the first visitor, to the, the visitor first timer, it rings a bell. When you tell the, the visitor, Valley of the Kings, ding, a bell rings. Uh -huh. He yeah. knows about the Valley of the mm -hmm. Kings. And Valley of the Queens, ding, the Hatshepsut Temple, and so on. So, so we have... The most the popular monuments in Egypt. Exactly. Egypt, yes. E exactly. Um, not necessarily the most important or crucial from different points of view. I mean popular. But popular, you are Famous. dead, you are dead right. Mm -hmm. But... You sit with an Egyptologist, or with a historian, or with a tour guide, mm -hmm. or a lecturer, and he will tell you Abydos. Some other guy will tell you Bani Hassan. Oh. Some other guy. Everybody is deciding on his own a kind of attraction to I'm a place. I'm talking about Abydos last we week. Did, we mm -hmm. did. And uh, what a place. Luxor, as all the places that we visit in this type of tour, mm -hmm. is divided by the River Nile into two banks. Mm -hmm the Western Bank and the Eastern Bank. Mm -hmm. And the West Bank, and the West Bank here, uh, I, always, I always remember many years ago, tell you how geography plays a very important role mm -hmm. in, in people's mind all around the world. Mm -hmm. Something funny. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling the people tomorrow, guys, we're going to go to the West Bank and we're going to visit the Valley of the Kings, Valley of the Queens, Hatshepsut Temple, uh, the terrace, the very famous terrace temple of Queen Hatshepsut, and the Valley of the Nobles, mm -hmm. the Colossi of Memnon, uh, which has got nothing to do with Memnon, by the way, as we are going to say, and uh, the Ramesseum Temple for Ramesses II, mm -hmm. Medina Tabu, which I always say, I always follow Medina Tabu by whoever didn't visit Medina Tabu, didn't visit any temples in ancient Egypt. And I'm saying... Is it Abydos? <laughs> no, Abydos is like, nobody touches Abydos. Um, so the interesting thing about, about uh, saying that is that when I was telling somebody, tomorrow we're going to head to the West Bank, so uh, this very nice gentleman tells me, uh, do we need our passports? <laughs> Yes. So I say, uh, no. Just, just got it now, please. <laughs> so he said, so it was so funny and we laughed and it became, became a joke and he, he was a very nice man. I would like here to please send, I mean, I'm not saying this exaggeration or nothing, but I'd, I'd like really to please send a huge hug and love to everybody I met in my tourist groups in the last 25 mm -hmm. years. These people, sometimes they suffer. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yes. There is something called jet lag. There is something called you're coming from 12 and 15 and 22 year, uh, hours of flying. Yes. Your day is night and your day, night is day. Yes. And you come and you try new food and try new sleep and you try new pillows and beds, which we all know this is a bit <laughs> tough for everybody. Uh, new traditions, new way of life for 15, 20 days. And, we add and you're lost. 
to use. And you love it. And they love it and you love it and everything. Yes. The West Bank of Luxor, mm -hmm. one ticket will allow you to visit three tombs. So be careful when you are using the tickets not to lose a ticket and leave it and go away because you like forgot that this ticket will allow you to enter other tombs. Yes. So same ticket, three tombs. But there are tombs then that pay, you have then to... Then they pay money to visit the tombs. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to get the tickets. If, you, if you have a tour guide or a tourist agency, of mm -hmm. course, they take care of all of this. Okay. But if you're on your own, be careful. You have to get yourself a ticket. Mm -hmm. Once you enter, you will find also, and b before that, now we are telling you, so if you want, mm -hmm. get some tickets also. If you want to go to Tut Al Khayyim, mm -hmm. Tut Al Khayyim, mm -hmm. tomb, tomb number 62, Mm -hmm. Even though it's not the biggest, not the largest, and you're going to stay there for like five to ten minutes and people will clap for you because it's important not to stay for long inside. But still, it's not a two times, it's a Muslim. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. And, uh, but importantly, you have to have a separate ticket mm -hmm. for tombs of special interest. So mm -hmm. you'll find, for example, Rami sees the sixth, which is right over, the, the entrance of which is right over to Tanhim. One of the reasons why the people did not find Tut Anchiman easily mm -hmm. is because there was an entrance of a tomb right over it. Uh -huh. And the historians and the Egyptologists uh -huh. and the excavators, mm -hmm. they knew perfectly well that no king in ancient Egypt will build over another, another king's, king's tomb. tomb yes. So if I see the entrance of Ramesses VI, why should I look under? I would be wasting my time. Mm -hmm. But there was a tomb under, and that was the tomb of Tut Anchiman. Ramesses VI. Why did they bury him under the other two? Mm. Historians differ in this. The analysis of this mm. phenomena mm -hmm. differs from one historian to the other. I per mm -hmm. personally believe... Something debatable, I think. Very, mm -hmm. very. But I personally believe that Tutankhamun's people, when they did the tomb and the tomb went and this and the sand came and covered and so on, the people of Ramesses the sixth one did not know that there is a tomb under them, maybe, perhaps, that's one, because that's all theor theorizing. Mm -hmm. Two is that they thought that maybe the entrance is close right over the tomb, only the entrance, not the whole deep tomb, because Ramesses sixth is deep like deep, mm -hmm. like forever. It goes forever. Ramesses the sixth, that's why another special private ticket for it. Mm -hmm. But I strongly advise with all my energy and with all my ba and ka and all <laughs> the energy and the power of ancient Egypt for you not to miss Ramesses VI. And I hope that, because sometimes the people close tombs because they get kind of attacked by humidity, attacked by breathing, by vibration, by thousands of visitors, pollution. Yes. Sometimes people touch and this, and we know that people sometimes say, please don't touch the monuments, or please don't put your back or your backpack mm -hmm. uh, on the walls, because that, of course, destroys the scenery. And the important thing about Ramesses VI is that it has got lots of religious texts in one tomb. And that makes it very important. But you can also visit other tombs without paying. And they are of then equal we pay, importance. Then we pay a ticket for, a white ticket for uh, visiting three tombs, which are? Any of your choice. Any of our I advise you, mm -hmm. Ramesses the fourth, mm -hmm. Ramesses the ninth, mm -hmm. and if you would like, Siptah, S-I-P-T-A-H, Siptah. Mm -hmm. And Siptah is at the end. So you walk inside the Valley of the Kings until before the end of the Valley of the Kings. You can ask me, what does it mean, the end of the Valley of the Kings? I want to tell you the mountain. And so you're going to hit the mountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Then we'll talk about each one of them in detail. Ramesses okay. the sixth. Ramesses the sixth. And the fourth, the sixth is the deepest. The fourth is the first. Uh -huh. It's the first tomb that you will meet on your right hand side when you enter. Mm -hmm. Right? What, what are the characteristics of this tomb? Most of those tombs mm -hmm. are dealing with the afterlife journey. Mm -hmm. Because the West Bank. Because that's, mm -hmm. West West. because that's the Western Bank. Mm -hmm. or the West Bank. And West means sunset and sunset mm -hmm. means the death. end. That's right. But death and between two brackets, yes. the Egyptian death. Yes, yes. the Egyptian <laughs> yes. The Which means Egyptian. the death before resurrection. Exactly. Or the, the, the period <laughs> or the phase before resurrection, yes. You are in a time capsule. Mm -hmm. Like the pyramid. The pyramid is like, it's, it's a coffin, it's a, it's a burial chamber, it's a huge building, it's an astronomical building, mm -hmm. it's an observatory, you name it. These tombs are like that. They are time capsule. They take the deceased from one place, which is this earth, mm -hmm. to the second place, which is the hereafter, mm -hmm. or the afterlife. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in order for you to reach to the other side safely, mm -hmm. and please underline safely six million lines, mm -hmm. because there are hundreds and tens and tens of bad evil characters trying to stop you from reaching your from afterlife. Reaching, yes. And that's why if you're a good person, you will be blessed by deities, mm -hmm. mythological deities, who are depicted on the walls of your tomb, yes. which will turn, as mythologically thought, mm -hmm. into reality. Because what's those magical spells on the walls doing? I mean, wh who's going to read those texts mm -hmm. that are depicted on the value of the queens mm -hmm. and the value of the nobles and mm -hmm. the value of the... And all these guys. I mean, this is a sealed tomb. No one's going to enter. Yes. Well, this is going to be read and recited as well by the, the souls and the spirits and the deities uh -huh. who can change everything on the walls into reality. Yes. So if you want anything in your afterlife, why don't you depict it on your wall? Because it can turn into reality. Uh -huh. So you want to reach safely. You want to have yes. a huge mm -hmm. funeral. Mm -hmm. This is the sixth. Mm -hmm. At the end, there is the most exquisite, exquisite mm -hmm. ceiling of the burial chamber. Mm -hmm. You will never. Only this one and Seti. And the tomb of Seti. Tomb of Seti most of the time is closed. Most of the time. Why? Uh, under restoration. Under restoration. Uh -huh. Under restoration. And to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. I'm happy with them closing Seti. Why? Because, <laughs> because Seti has got depicted scenery that you've never seen before or after. Something of a unique, and that's, I'm saying a lot here, because I'm, I'm, I'm comparing Seti to things like Ramesses the sixth and Ramesses the fourth, mm -hmm. and that's saying a lot. Mm -hmm. So if I can tell you now that I'm happy that they, they closed Seti for years now, and I had the permission to enter it while it was under restoration. Yes. And oh my God, those colors are amazing. And uh, when I'm saying after 25 years about a tomb that its color is amazing, so that gives you a hint because mm -hmm. all the colors after that I see. Then after restoration, something completely different, amazing. something just amazing. The ceiling of the burial chamber is always an astronomical scene, which is taking the body of the deceased into the realm of the funerary concept. So, you will find, for example, mm -hmm. in the tomb of the burial chamber of the tomb of Ramesses VI, you will find meat, the sky. We are talking now Ramesses about the Ramesses the sixth. That's right. I'm uh, far comparing. from city. Yeah, I'm comparing. Okay. And at the end, uh, as I told you, we're going to find Nut. Nut is the sky mythological deity. Nut is cute. Nut is cute, as I say. Nut played a very important role in the mythology of creation, according to the ancient Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And Nut has got a job. Nut has got to swallow the sun and expel it through its below area by expelling the sun and swallowing it Nut is performing sunrise and sunset mm -hmm. the phenomena of death yes. and I'm playing with my two fingers here <laughs> making inverted commas okay and Egyptian death and resurrection because the sun resurrects itself every day, day yes every sunrise mm -hmm. there is life mm -hmm. every sunset there is leaving Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's put it this way, <laughs> leaving. <laughs> I guess that uh, will, will come as a, as a good word for people who are afraid of uh, leaving <laughs> and departing. Okay. So, the deceased, here is another good word, the deceased has got to go through this journey with the sun through that astronomical phenomena. Mm -hmm. Through that journey, you are on a boat. Yes. The deities will allow you to have two boats. Mm -hmm. A boat called Ma'injit, a little bit of hieroglyphs today, and a boat called Mesektit. So, Ma'injit, yes, Ma'injit, and Mesektit. Mesektit, yes. <laughs> Ma'injit and Mesektit. How to read hieroglyphs, first grade. <laughs> Ma'injit and Mesektit. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent, well done. Mesektet gives you the idea of what in Arabic? Mesektet. Mesektet what, what something to catch Mesektet something to, to hold the chance. Okay. Seket. Seket. Gives you what? Seket. Yes. To stop. To, so to stop calmness. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you like. So Mesektet is the boat that you are given to sail through your journey of eternity which takes 24 hours. This journey by this particular boat will be for 12 hours of the night. That's why this is, the night, this is the night boat. 
The night, night boat, boat. yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll call it the night boat. Night boat? The night boat, yeah. 12 It's like one of those restaurants in the river <laughs> Nile. <laughs> night boat. <laughs> Have nice dinner, right? But ma'anjit, ma, ma'anjit, ma, with, with, with ma, light. So mm-hmm. that's the 12 hours of the night. Of the morning. Of the morning. Mm-hmm. So now you are ready with your two boats. You are all highly equipped, ready to go, go. Thunder, uh, thunderbirds are go. Time to go. Then each one is provided with two boats. We are going to sail through the river of Wernes. River of? Wernes. W-R-N-E-S-S. W-R-N-E-S-S. Wernes. Wernes. The river Wernes simply is like the river Nile, but instead of water, it's sparkling stars. Mm-hmm. How amazingly beautiful is this? You are sailing with a boat through sailing sparkling space. stars. Mm-hmm. Note is with you, and Note is cute. <laughs> <laughs> you know about it. <laughs> you seen Love Note. <laughs> Love Note. <laughs> right. And the sun is with you. What more do you need? And now you are going to the awareness is the river Nile of heaven. Awareness is the Milky Way. It's the Milky Way. It's the Milky Way. So the ancient Egyptian man right. saw awareness. He saw the Milky Way. Mm-hmm. But he interpreted the Milky Way in a way, <laughs> way. right, in a way, yes. uh, of, of his religious aspects and religious concepts. Then even the, the Nile River on Earth was very symbolic. Exactly. Because that's why it was sacred, because they have another one there up in heaven or in the sky or and whatever. that is the secret of that theory that came up some years ago calling mm, Heaven's Mirror. Mm-hmm. Some historians believe that ancient Egyptians and ancient civilizations, all mm-hmm. civilizations mm-hmm. ancient civilizations, mm-hmm. believe that everything on Earth should have its reflection in the sky. When I said my second sphinx theory, which we can make a program about it, and I, I'm simply saying there's a second sphinx in Giza. But that, of course, is a work of 15 years or mm-hmm. something. And uh, somebody came to me from the people who believe in Heaven's Mirror, and he said, Sam, there is a second sphinx, yes. But not under the ground, as you say. It's in so heaven. He said it's in heaven. Okay. What is it? Mm-hmm. It's the Leo. The Leo zodiac sign. The sphinx is a Leo. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So and he's the, talking about the zodiac, uh, the zodiac signs. Mm-hmm. No. Talking of Leo, in the tomb of Seti, and since you guys are not going to have the ability to enter Seti, at mm-hmm. least for the time being, unless they mm-hmm. open it tomorrow or they open it already today <laughs> or, or some months or years ago, uh, at the end, in the burial chamber, look up again, like you did with Ramesses, the sixth. At Seti's, you will find the line. Blue, all the ceiling is blue, and in yellowish, drawn a line. Around the line is number of stars. Mm-hmm. So I counted those stars. Between 21 to 22 stars. I went to my astrology and astronomy book mm-hmm. of ABC astronomy, ABC astrology, mm-hmm. and I found that there is only one star missing in the zodiac sign compilation of stars. You know that the zodiac sign is a compilation of stars mm-hmm. yes. forming a shape. Right? The spoon, the line, I don't know what, the bear. The, the whale, the bear, mm-hmm. the fish, the this, mm-hmm. the Pisces. The what did the ancient Egyptian man use to get the number of stars forming the Leo zodiac sign in the tomb of Seti with only one star discrepancy? He made a mistake in one star only mm-hmm. out of 22 stars. This is pretty accurate if you don't have any telescopes. Mm-hmm. How did he know that? Here's a question. How did he know the accuracy? What's special the Leo? Oh, there are other zodiac signs. I'm taking only the zodiac sign Leo as an example. But in fact, the tomb has every... uh, Not every, but the tomb has got loads of zodiac signs. uh Loads. Mm -hmm. But I took Leo because I was talking about Leo as an example. And I was amazed to to know and to understand and to study and to, to write about it, probably for the first time in my, in my readings, at least, in my modest readings, I never read this, that, that the ancient Egyptian made one minute mistake of missing one star only. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. in 22 stores and he didn't use lenses. The ancient Egyptians did not use lenses. There was no Galileo there. There was no Ibn Shatr there. There was no El Bayroni there or Bironi. But they were very clever at this time, by the way. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then they put it as a function in the religious concept. Mm. So, what's finally, so that we can like jump to another place, what they is the point it, of... They put it into concept in the... For, for the religious concept itself. What do you mean? Making it a function for him religiously to reach, to, to deal with the deities of the afterlife, to introduce himself as, as a demi-deity, as a half-deity, mm -hmm. because now it's time for him to be one of them, mm -hmm. <laughs> as they believed. The interesting the Pharaoh. The, the king, mm -hmm. that's right. And the interesting thing about this is that, what's the point? What's the point of all this effort? I mean, mm -hmm. digging and diving into the mountains and mm -hmm. people and painters and people carvers and this and then they were, and then the coffin comes in heavy pink granite from Aswan and Aswan sails all the way to the bank and the bank then there will be a canal and this canal will be dug specially from the west bank all the way to the valley of the kings so that they can move the boat with the coffin Blocks. on it and the block and so on mm -hmm. I mean what's the point what's the point of hardship suit making a tomb of 214 and a half meters deep in the mountain you can make a tomb of 10 meters. Mm -hmm. Why are you going 214 and a half meters? Two. Two things. One, leave me alone. I want to be in mm -hmm. peace. I want to be left alone inside this tomb. Because this tomb is, as we said, my capsule time to the afterlife. This is my transit. Mm -hmm. My transit tomb, mm -hmm. which will take me to the afterlife. Any messing with this scenery, any messing with my funerary possessions, mm -hmm. any messing with my papyri, any messing with my body, my ghet in hieroglyphics, in body, body means ghet in hieroglyphics, that's why ghetta, ghetta, really? your Let body, ghetta, ghetta. Mm -hmm. So, ghetta, gutha. Gutha, that's mm -hmm. right. So, interestingly enough, you will know that they were, they wanted to be left alone. Mm -hmm. Now, my so very, my, my very, Totally. Mm -hmm. Living in peace. Mm -hmm. This is number one. Number two. If, before I jump to number two, mm -hmm. would you please allow me to tell you my most amazing, when I know it's controversial, mm -hmm. and I know that if somebody from the classic school are listening to us today, it will it, it create some debate, which, mm -hmm. which I'm ready for with all politeness. I'm saying, if the ancient Egyptians did all this effort to be left alone in a coffin, I mean, why on earth did we went in and brought those bodies to some glass case in a museum? I mean, I am a guy who loves ancient Egypt, as you all well know. I'm a guy who wrote over 50 books. I am a guy who adores and I am married to Egyptology. I'm not only a friend, I'm married to her. And I've got kids. <laughs> she got me kids. Right? But I can still stand up and say something as controversial as this. I think because I don't wise, we should respect the dead bodies. I think so. Well said. I well said. I said well said. Uh, on one of the TV shows, they brought me the dean of the Egypt, faculty of Egyptology. Very, very respectable man. And the, the, the lady in the middle, uh, commentator Wilson. So I started my, my new campaign of, it's called Back to Eternity bring those mummies to the tombs of the Valley of the Kings. Put them inside their coffins and let, let's see the coffin sealed inside the... Uh, mm -hmm. Let the people, if you, if you want, if you are dying to get tourism, of course you will allow the people to enter and see the, the scenery and everything. One, you don't have to open all the tombs. You can take pictures and show them exactly. the picture, how do they look and like. And because the definitely appreciate. people are very curious to know how do they look like. Of course. The mummified bodies. Everybody does. Lives. I used to. Mm -hmm. Of course I used to. I mean, I didn't have any problem, personally, I didn't have any problem with that until, you know, I read about something, something hit me, you know, a message was sent to me and I'm going, what? Or a video, for example, a video tape, yeah. the transient show. I mean, listen, Manchester Museum made a huge move on the internet a couple of, some years ago when I started mm -hmm. Back to Eternity, when mm -hmm. I started my campaign of bringing the mummies back mm -hmm. to their tombs. And they were asking the British people, see how respectable this is. Mm -hmm. 
Would you like the mummies to be wrapped or not? Would you like the mummies to be wrapped or unwrapped? Mm -hmm. And when I went to the British Museum some years ago, there was x-rays of the mummies, of the wrapped mummies on the glass case. I'm saying a question. Okay, you brought those people out. So, uh, the respectable dean, uh, professor, was replying to me saying, no, but Sam, you know, I mean, these are kind of monuments. They look at it as monuments. We, we benefit from the study of their bodies. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking myself one day, I'm going, what benefit? I mean, so let's make it a question. Yeah. Let's ask our, 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 our listeners at home or in cars or wherever they are, how do you see this, how do you see this, this issue? Yeah. I mean, not are you with or against wrapping them, returning I'll them make it to easier. I'll make it easier mm -hmm. for you to answer. And that's what I told the dean. As a matter of fact, I directed myself like this, put my hand in my pocket. I was about to bring some money. We were filming. Mm -hmm. We are in a studio. Mm -hmm. and I'm, saying, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm directing my hands towards the commentator, a very fine young Egyptian lady, mm -hmm. very respectable lady. And I'm going, here is 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's a 100 or 50. I would like to see your grandpa. The deceased grandpa. Mm -hmm. In a fraction of a second. She goes, no. I said, why? Respect of the dead. I said, so but those beings. are grand They are human beings before being monuments. They are human beings. And that was the debate. The people, when they reply to you, in, in more than one program, as a matter of fact, they will tell you, no, we are not looking at them as this, we are looking at them as... I said, yes, but, I know, uh, traditions, religion, respect... Think a photo, a visit is, is enough, is quite enough, I fair talk, enough. I talked to, I talked to Sheikh al mm -hmm. God bless his soul in heaven. Mm -hmm. And to those who don't know, mm -hmm. doctor, mm -hmm. professor, doctor, al is mm -hmm. one of the top names in our scholars, scholars yes. in, mm -hmm. in the religious and in the Islamic from al -Azhar. Sir, Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. I would like to ask you a question. I'm making a campaign call back to eternity. I'm asking for the bodies of the ancient Egyptians to go back to their tombs. Respect. The respect of the deceased is burying it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the word that we always say? Mm -hmm. yani, to the people who do not know about burying concept of Islam, mm -hmm. the first thing when you hear somebody's dead, the first question before you say, I'm sorry, before you say, is, uh, is like, when is the burial? Because everybody is concerned that the burial is quick. Mm -hmm. Because in our beliefs and in our traditions, in I Islam, is the respect. And I'm, I'm sure of that. I'm just saying. Yes. I'm saying because I asked because this the person. Spirit of any, the spirit or the essence of any religion is to respect human beings, whether they are alive or dead. That's perfectly right. Now, let us make the question easier uh, one more time. Where is J.F. Kennedy? Where is the body of Kennedy? the ex or the past president of uh, the United States. States of America. It is not in a museum, right? Mm -hmm. It is not magnified, right? Mm -hmm. Where is Charles de Gaulle? And so on and so forth. You got my point. Mm -hmm. Where is Gamal Abdel Nasser? Where is Anwar Sadat? Where is Mao Zedong? Where are all those people? Where? And for, for some people, they are legends. Uh, Grandi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the grand story. Mao Zedong for the Chinese. Mao, Mao Zedong is, mm -hmm. as we know, uh, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, I'm sure the people got my point. Then the first point was. Leave me alone. Because I don't know. I'm, I'm in peace. <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone. That's fine, my leave, me alone yes. leave me alone. I would like to live in peace until mm -hmm. I go to the other side. Okay. So Number two mm -hmm. is to those who are going to enter my realm of eternal slumber mm -hmm. and interrupt me in my eternal sleep, they will be slaughtered by the wings of death. This is oh, a formula. Mm -hmm. This is a written and sometimes carved formula on the walls of the tombs. Mm -hmm. There were something mm -hmm. called the curse formula. Mm -hmm. Of course, Hollywood afterwards made mummy yes, curse, and yes. I don't know what, <laughs> and the people started to believe in it, and I don't know some books, I don't know from some writers, and but that's of course all nonsense. Mm -hmm. There is no power from 7,000 years controlling mm -hmm. us and so on. It's all scientific, it's all 
chemical reactions happening in a mummy and clothes for 4,000 years, you open the door, of course you're going to sniff something bad and you're going to die. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, only, it's only scientific. Yeah, it's only very peripheral poisons. And I know, I know doctors in microbiology and so on. Dr. Harald Hifnawi has made a study on that and talked many times about this. And uh, she explained to us how bacteria and how this works on the mummy and then when you sniff it, it leads to problem with the respiratory mm -hmm. system and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So there were something called the mummy curse formula. Mm -hmm. If you enter, uh, we have a tomb near the Sphinx of one of the supervisors of the workers mm -hmm. who participated in the building of the Giza Plateau buildings. The most cutest sentence in hieroglyphics. Mm -hmm. To those who are going to enter my tomb, they will be eaten by. And he drew a lion, mm -hmm. and he drew a hippopotamus, <laughs> and he drew a crocodile. I'm, I'm picturing that this, as he believed, is going to turn into reality, as we said. Uh -huh. So there will be in reality a hippo mm -hmm. standing in front of the tomb or inside the tomb, a lion and a crocodile. Now, a lion, mao, lions, mao. So, ma, mao, lion, lions in hieroglyphs. Mesech, mm -hmm. crocodile, timseh, mesech in hieroglyphs. The interesting thing is that that didn't stop many of the thieves. I was, I was just <laughs> going to tell you something about all these things. That and all these didn't curses, attack all, nobody. Everything, all the, the animals on earth, <laughs> they got robbed. That's exactly. Exactly. And hey, here's another big surprise. Some of this robbery took place in the days of the ancient Egyptians. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. I know, yes. Oh, yeah, we have a very, very big event of, of this and we can uh, do it in another program. But okay, the, the interesting two, thing the is... The two points are... And this and this. Leave before I leave lines, and before I leave lines, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but this will be very interesting and very funny. Mm -hmm. Before I leave lines, is that we said that the lines is in hieroglyphs? Now. Mm. Now, is that the same now that the mother tell her son when she asks me a question in our beautiful Egyptian society? And he goes, ma, 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 and she goes, gek mau. Now, what's gek mau? Gek is, he's going to come to you. Huh. Mau is, there is no mau in Arabic. What's mau? So perhaps, mau, that the mother is threatening her son, that he's going to come to her, to him, or to her, her, her daughter or her son, huh? mm -hmm. and harm him or something because he didn't make his homework or something, uh, you will have the lines coming to you. Gek Mao, because Mao in hieroglyphs is lines. Mm -hmm. So there is a theory that says that this word lived in the traditions of philology in this country, mm -hmm. and it is the lines are going to come uh, to to harm you if you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Especially when you are hesitant. Ma 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 in in Arabic is is hesitation. Mm -hmm. So you are about to lie now. If you are doing the ma ma ma, then you are about to lie. Okay. And it's a thing. Maybe. It's a thing. Maybe. Maybe. Why not? Okay, let's take a break. And again, our telephone number is two five seven eight nine four zero seven. We have Bassem Shamawi, and we are sailing along the Nile. And now we are in Luxor, visiting the Western Bank and its beautiful temples. Any comments? Any questions? Two five seven eight nine four zero seven. And let's take a break.